You are watching the me. TV. Me, my yeah. favorite subject. <laughs> me TV. My name is Lisa Welchel. You might recognize me from my time on television. Now I'm meeting people with the most amazing collections we can find. I live in the toy store. I bring in experts to appraise these treasures and hope to make a deal with our collector to trade one of their precious gems for an elusive item that's been on their wish list. Scott, you know how to step on my fingers, don't you? Will there be a trade? It's the collector's call. at the home of Ronald Toby. His house overflows with the spoils of nearly six decades of collecting. My house is a blue collar museum. It's based on the things that working people had. Each room in Ronald's home features a different collection, but he has a special passion for sports memorabilia and vintage toys. It's indescribable. It's almost like being Santa Claus. Wow, you got all these toys? He brings the kid out of all of us. Joining us is sports memorabilia dealer Scott Ibera, who shares in Ronald's fondness for toys from his childhood. Ronald's collection is so massive. He's that collector that probably isn't going to sell anything. He's either going to maintain it or pass it on. Scott will put a price on these rare collectibles, and later he tries to entice Ronald into a trade with an item from his personal collection. Will Ronald part with a piece of his childhood? It's the collector's call. Welcome to Collector's Call. What is it that got you started collecting and what keeps you collecting? It was a thrill of the hunt, going to look for things. Everything that I have in my house, it came at one piece at a time. I held on to everything that I could. Toys, memorabilia, it's like an addiction, but it's a good addiction. How old were you when you first started collecting toys? My love of toys started when I was about five or six years old. My uncle, he had a job at the toy factory. We'd go inside, I would dump the trash cans, clean the desk, and he would, he would say, uh, go find you something that you want. It was amazing to be there and see I made toys when I never had toys like that. Wow, what a wonderful, wonderful memory. People collect what brings them back to their childhood. And when you find somebody who loves to collect a wide variety or just a small niche, it makes their collection more personal to them. How did you get started collecting the sports memorabilia? I started collecting sports memorabilia when a friend of mine in the late 70s would do the scoreboards at this spectrum. That gave me the love of boxing, going down to see the fighters there. I don't know a whole lot about sports, so thankfully we have an expert who has been with us before when we've needed someone who knows everything about anything about sports. And if he doesn't know, he can find out. So Scott, how did you get started? Refresh us. Well, thank you for welcoming me back, Lisa. I got out of the United States Navy and went to go work in professional sports. And that just fueled my passion for uh, collecting. Ronald, well, I'm very excited about seeing your collection. What are you gonna share with us first? I'm going to share with you Will Chamberlain's plate. What kind of plate is this? Where did he come from? This was a ceremonial plate given to Will Chamberlain in 1961 by the Dapper Dan Club. He left the plate with his sister. His sister ended up giving it to my aunt, and she gave it to me. He used to laugh about it that they didn't spell his name right. Instead of Chamberlain, it was spelled Chamberlain, R-A-I-N. He thought it was quite funny. So, Scott, it's 60 years old. What kind of value would you put on this? So Lisa, this, this piece has a little bit of difficulty when you try to appraise something like this. Will Chamberlain has accomplished so much in his career. It's not something that the average buyer is gonna want, but it's gonna be something that a Will Chamberlain person is gonna want. I know that there's a misspelling, so that makes it a little bit more unique. So you're talking a couple thousand dollars for this, this type of piece. Would you say that the misspelling makes it more valuable or less valuable? It depends on the collector. It could devalue it a bit, but it could also bring value to a personal collector. I can understand why it'd be hard to appraise this. It's just one of one. It's not even like there's something out there that sold recently for this amount of money. What comes to mind is how lucky I am to be the, the taker of it and to hold on to it, to pass it on to the next person. Did you get anything else from uh, Will Chamberlain's sister? 
this didn't come from the sister. This is a piece of the floor, Hershey, PA. First time in NBA history that a player scored 100 points. Years later, they were going to tear the floor up at Hershey, so they decided to cut the floor up and give pieces to the ticket-holding fans. If you are going to get a piece of any floor from basketball, this is the one to have, where Wilt Chamberlain scored 100 points all by himself. <laughs> I had about 15 pieces of the floor. I sent my nephews, cousins, everybody went to the game that night to get me flooring. So it's not a valuable piece, but it is a commemorative piece, just to say you have a piece of the floor from Hershey. But let's ask Scott if it's a valuable piece. Is this a valuable piece, or is this more one of those things that just has a lot of wonderful memories attached to it? I think I'm actually going to shock Ronald with this one. That's a very, very unique item. There's not many times in history that you get a chance to get an actual piece of a stadium. Ronald, that piece is actually worth anywhere between between a thousand dollars and twenty five hundred dollars. Ronald, what do you think about that? I'm glad you told me that because I've been giving these away like they were Hershey's candy. I'm, I'm not giving them away anymore, that's for sure. Stop giving them away. I might have to stop over the house and see if they're still around. I might get that floor back. <laughs> Yeah, this was definitely uh, a floor sale, and uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> the one you might regret. Oh, you got that right. It doesn't surprise me that Ronald was just giving them away. And here's the thing. I don't think he would have changed a decision, even knowing how much they're worth. I think he'd still give them away. You mentioned that your first love and introduction to sports was boxing. Do you have anything particular that you have collected from uh, the boxing world? Yes, I do. One of my favorites that I do have, my Muhammad Ali glove. This is the glove that I purchased. So when they sent you the glove years ago, they sent you two gloves. My uncle had a limousine service, which we always catered to Joe Frazier. We took Joe wherever he wanted to go. Since I had two gloves, I decided that by us knowing Frazier, I was going to get Joe to sign the other glove. And what he did with this glove was he signed Mr. Joseph Joe Frazier. And it worked out pretty good that I got, I have a pair of gloves, same gloves, that are signed by both champions. That is an incredible set. So the first glove, the Ali glove, you bought how long ago? 1980. How much did you have to pay for that glove? Maybe 150 bucks. So Scott, $150 from the 80s. Sounds like a great deal to me. It is a great deal. It's a fantastic glove. Unauthenticated, you really can't put a value on something like that. Authenticated, you're talking about a glove that's anywhere between $15 to $2,000. How would Ronald get that authenticated? So authentication within our industry is huge. Third-party authenticators is, is normally who you would end up going through. There's a number of companies that you could utilize to get that done and get a COA or an LOA, a letter of authenticity as well, to just verify all the authentication that would need to be done to give it the 100% value that it deserves. What about this other glove? He's obtained some value, and where the value actually come in is in the uniqueness of the inscription that he has. So typically you end up seeing Joe Frazier's gloves, just signed Joe Frazier, but he has one that's a little bit more unique. So you're talking about a glove that's anywhere between two to three hundred dollars. What about the set? Because that is a pretty fabulous set with the two boxing gloves together. The set has better value. If I was to put a retail value on the set, I would put it close to three thousand dollars. You're talking about the fight of the century. That just brings some intense history together. When you can kind of bring things together, that's what makes your collection a little bit more intriguing. For a personal collection, it makes it priceless. For someone to sell it, makes it even more valuable. Coming up, Ronald takes us back to childhood with his collection of vintage toys. This is one toy that I had since I was a kid. And later, Scott turns sentimental as he discovers a toy from his own past and proposes a trade. Will Ronald agree to part with his childhood love? We'll find out next on Collector's Call. And we're back. It's time to see which chew provides the longest lasting flea and tick protection. Revecto's the big winner. 12 weeks of powerful protection, nearly three times longer than any other chew. Bravo, Revecto. Bravo. 
Ah, allergy sufferers. Bedtime means it's time to take Zizol. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin, and on first dose, provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. Ronald, whose museum-style house is packed to the brim with iconic sports memorabilia and vintage toys. We're also joined by sports memorabilia expert and fellow collector, Scott Abera, who will value Ronald's trove and try to entice Ronald to part with a special item. But first, we have so much more to see. One of my favorite football players was Jim Brown. This is the Jim Brown Cleveland Browns helmet. A friend of mine, he got this for me because he knew I liked Jim Brown. And what I gave him was, this is an Aurora model from 1963. That's Jim Brown. I gave him one in the box built up. He seemed to be as proud of that Aurora model as he was of the signed helmet. So you traded the model in the box for the signed helmet. So Scott, how much is the helmet worth today? And would it be more valuable with the model included as a set? It kind of depends on what the, the, a collector is going to look for. A collector may just want the helmet. A collector may want just the Aurora. Personally, for myself, the helmet is the best because Jim Brown isn't really signing that much more because he's getting up in age. That helmet could, could potentially have about a $750 value. I just wanted the helmet to go with the Aurora toy. And like Scott said, some collectors want the toys, some want the helmet. I want the toys. Brings both of the worlds that you love together with the sporting and the toys. Yes, uh, both things finally came together to a head. Tell me about the toys. Here's one of the old toys I had. It's not in great shape. This is the last of what we have of the Evil Knievels. It's an Evil Knievel on the bike. I have the van. Oh, I remember Evil Knievel, and my brother loved Evil Knievel. I remember watching him make those big jumps or not make those big jumps. So it's ironic that you say it it's reminds you of your brother. It actually reminds me of my childhood. The Evil Knievel toys, I remember them. I had it, I, I revved it up, and I let it go. So Ronald, by chance, do you happen to have all the accessories? I know that the, the van had a ramp that went on the back, and then also some other odds and ends that were inside the van. No, those pieces, I got my eye on them. I go out every week, and I look around. So Scott, what would that be worth today? Your value is in toys if they're still in mint condition, if they're still in the box and all the pieces are there. Ronald kind of said that he's missing some of the pieces. So everything that Ronald has combined together, it's about $300 retail. I know what Scott's saying. It's not in pristine condition. It's not in the box. But man, that van's still in great condition considering how old it is. So Ronald, do you have anything else from your childhood or mine? Yes, I have a Hopalong Cassidy lunchbox. And here's the thermos. And the thermos as well. My goodness. I got it from an estate sale. If this thermos could talk, it'd probably tell us a lot of things. It looks like it's in great condition. Another thing on my bucket list I was looking for for the longest, and when I found it, I was I was I was really happy about it. Lunch boxes are hard to find. It ain't like you go to the store and buy these things. You gotta know how to have a hunt. You gotta have an eye at a tiger. Do you remember how much you paid for the Hopalong Cassidy lunchbox at the estate sale? See, I think I paid 50 bucks for it. And that's because it had the thermos. Scott, how'd you do? To see a Hopalong Cassidy, the 1961 era version of it, condition is everything. He has the thermos, but he's missing a piece. It was actually a three-piece set. It was a wallet, the thermos, and the lunchbox all came together. He's missing the collector's wallet. So obviously when you have all three of those pieces and if you had mint condition, you're talking really, really good value. In Ronald's condition that I could see, his value would be about $300. It's the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And I'm still defeated. I'm looking for that wallet. And if I find it good and if I don't, I'm still happy with what I have. Coming up. Ronald shares a toy from his childhood with a special history. So this is the hat you played with as a child? As a child. And then, Scott tries to tap into Ronald's nostalgia with a special trade item. But will Ronald go for it?
They are. The A-Team. The A-Team. The A-Team. There's only one A-Team. Premiering this Monday at 6, 5 Central. Part of the summer of me on ETV. Need arch support, but orthotics make your shoes too tight? Now there's Copperfit Arch Relief Plus, the revolutionary adjustable orthotic arch supports that form fit to your feet, not your shoes, so you can comfortably wear them in any shoes. Every shoe that I have, it makes a difference in. Whether I'm barefoot, wearing flip-flops, basketball shoes, running shoes, they go in and they last. I wear them around the house. I wear them in my sandals, in my bare feet. It's been amazing. It's like a night and day difference, wearing these and not wearing them. A copper-infused adjustable compression band with a built-in semi-rigid orthotic arch support that form fits to your arches for support and pain relief exactly where you need it whenever you want it. I love these. My arches are constantly taking a pounding and insoles, they don't work. But with arch relief, I feel a huge difference. It fits perfectly right where there's pressure on my feet. So thin, so comfortable that it fits in any shoe. For plantar fasciitis, fallen arches, flat feet, arch relief stays with you whenever you need it at work. And play and wear shoe orthotics stop. Arch Relief keeps working to support and relieve foot pain, even barefoot. It's arch support without the shoe. You don't need the shoe. Dress shoes, tennis shoes, loafer sandals, doesn't matter what you're wearing, right? This fits your foot, your foot fits your shoes. That's it. The revolutionary new Copperfit Arch Relief Plus. The fast, easy way to get foot relief. Guaranteed or your money back. Order online now at archreliefplus.com for only $19.99. Or call 1-800-216-4958. Order right now and your shipping is free. This literally changes everything. If you're always on your feet, this is what you need. Arch support that's always with your arches. Brilliant. Arch support where you need it. On your feed. The original Arch Relief Plus. Only from Copperfit. This is poof! The most powerful pet odor eliminator in the world. No harsh chemicals. No harsh chemicals no at all! No fragrances. None! Seriously? Oh. It's safe for people, pets, and the planet. What's this? Oh. That's pure ammonia. Oh. Just gotta poof it. Oof. Check this out. Wow, I don't smell anything. Literally nothing. That's because there's nothing to smell. Poof is a commercial grade formula. A no nonsense, no fragrance odor eliminator. A formula used in the country's largest municipal waste companies to eliminate organic odors and make entire communities more livable. Yet it meets the most stringent safety standards. Pet odor, poof it. Urine, poof. Feces, poof. vomit. Litter box smell, plus the odor on the pet. Wet dog, Boop. eye odor, Boop. ear odor, Boop. face odor, Boop. stinky skin folds, Boop. any organic odor, Boop. even skunk odor. Ugh. One spray and it goes away. Give it a smell. Wow. Generic sprays only cover up and reduce odor. I smell like poop and flowers now. Poof worse. Instantly, it dismantles odor on a molecular level. It literally takes stink out of the equation. Powerful enough to eliminate skunk odor and a stink in artificial turf and garbage cans. Yet safe enough to use on pet toys, their beds, even on them. So why waste money on any product that doesn't totally eliminate the stink? Call now and get a 32-ounce bottle of poof for just $24.95 and get free shipping. And I guarantee you'll never use anything else again. Plus, get a free sale. Sample of Poof Laundry Odor Eliminator. Just one wash removes the toughest odors from your laundry and your washer. There's only one Poof. Don't settle for imitations. If it's not Poof, it stinks. Our expert Scott appraises Ronald's collection of sports memorabilia and vintage toys and hopes to make a trade for an item from his past. But first, more of Ronald's treasures. So I'm loving these toys. What else do you have, Ronald? This is one toy that I can say that I had since I was a kid. It's a Roy Rogers hat with Roy's lithogram signature in it. And he has a danger inside it. So this is the hat you played with as a child? As a child. Ronald's clearly a guy who's young at heart. But you know what? When he was young, I think he was old at heart. To have the foresight to collect these things from his childhood. I wish I'd done that. Back then, 
there wasn't much on TV, so you had you had to go with Roy. Happy trails to you. Wow, so you are a big Roy Rogers fan. Well, that's perfect because we have a little something special just for you, Ronald, to go with your love of Roy Rogers. Hi, Ronald. I'm Eddie Goldfarb, and I'm the inventor of the Roy Rogers Quick Shooter hat. My wife, Anita, and I went up to the Roy Rogers ranch. He loved the item. He gave us one of his hats so we can put a mechanism in it. Thanks for being a toy collector, and thanks for collecting the Roy Rogers hat. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, you know what? When you have your museum, you're going to have to have that little video playing right by the hat. you have have my eyes running here. For him to invent something like that and to give me a shout-out, a guy that don't get shout-outs, that's the best thing happened to me in a long time. It's all about the fun of collecting. It's all about the fun of people enjoying what you do. Now I feel terrible asking, but it is part of the show. I know it's priceless, but Scott, how much would that hat be worth today? The condition of the hat looks very good. Obviously, having the secret gun in the compartment is important to go with it as well. It, it looks like it's all original. Do you still happen to have the box by chance? No, no. If you had the box you're, with the complete item, you're looking at about $300 to $350. Without the box, you're only losing about $100 to $150. So I would estimate this value at about $200. That's pretty substantial to me. Unfortunately, having that $100 $150 because you don't have the box, it, it, it's, it does add up, but at the same time, you're never gonna replace those smiles that Ronald's had as a child. That's what I, I tell you, when you buy something that you like, and if it's not valuable, if you like it, you, you got what you're looking for. I'm still fascinated about how does that work? Does the, I mean, obviously they have to take the hat off. Like, are you gonna like, howdy, partner? I mean, how does that work? I think it's pretty cool though. Knowing what he has and what we've seen today, what would be your guesstimate about how much Ronald's entire collection is worth? Today we saw the Wilt Chamberlain sterling silver plate and floorboards from his 100-point game, the Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier signed boxing gloves, the Jim Brown signed helmet, the Evil Knievel van and figurines, the Hopalong Cassidy lunchbox, and the Roy Rogers quick shooter hat. He's got something that's worth about a quarter of a million dollars. $250,000 is what I would say. Wow. So Ronald, I know it's priceless to you, but $250,000 is a nice price. How do you feel about that? Whatever they say with me is fine because I never intend to sell. I'm looking to leave a legacy for why I was here. And if it's from toys and doing a museum and making kids happy, this has no price on it for me. I'm just so happy that it's worth this much. I know that Ronald would never sell it, but you know what? This is, he's invested his heart and soul into this collection. Well, we've got one more thing for you, though. We ask our expert to bring an item that he thinks that you're gonna just have to have for your museum. The twist is he has his eye on something to make that trade. So what'd you come prepared with today, Scott? Well, I brought a love of a little bit of both of what Ronald has. Toy mixed with autograph. So what I brought today is an autographed figurine. It's 71 inches tall. It's Darth Vader. It's signed by David Prowse. David Prowse was the actual person yes. who played Darth Vader. It's inscribed, may the force be with you. It's something different, so it does intrigue me. I don't have one, so I would love to bring something new into the museum. What I saw that I want is the Evil Knievel stuff. Ooh, Scott. Scott, you know how to step on my fingers, don't you? Up next. Will Ronald sympathize with Scott and give up his evil Knievel items? Or does his personal connection to the toys prevail? Attention! Where are we? I mean, this is like a bunker. Forward march to a G.I. Joe collection. I started collecting when I was eight years old, and then I stopped, I guess, when I die. <laughs> Sunday at 6.30, 5.30 Central. I'm Samantha. And I'm Dan. And we are in RVs. Before 
we had Chime, we were pretty much paycheck to paycheck. My favorite feature of Chime is their spot fee. It just gives me peace of mind when I'm buying stuff. We use Chime's secured credit builder card, and we've upped our credit score 40 points. By making everyday purchases with on-time payments. I Chime because building our future and planning ahead financially has never been easier. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and nutrients to support immune health. Online dating? I know people meet that way, but where would I even begin? Open laptop? Go to OurTime.com? Look for free. It's easy to take a look on OurTime, the fastest growing dating site for people over 50. Using Wi-Fi without NordVPN could mean sharing your private stuff with more people than you think. Get NordVPN and encrypt your internet connection. NordVPN. Online security starts with a click. You know Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need? Like how I customized this scarf? Check out this backpack I made for Marco. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Hi, Grandma. I played baseball today. Oh, that's great. What position did you play? First base. <gasps> that's what Grandpa used to play. <laughs> when our hearing wouldn't allow us to use a regular phone, it made us feel isolated. It became difficult to communicate with our friends and family. Clear Captions was an easy solution for us. Clear Captions provides captions on a phone like captioning on your TV so you can see what the caller is saying live as they say it. Making it easy to understand and respond immediately. There is no insurance or Medicare required. Clear Captions service is provided at no cost to you through a federally funded program. We deliver, install, and train you on how to use your phone all at no cost to you. Give your loved ones the independence and connection they deserve. Call now to see if you qualify to get a Clear Captions phone at no cost to you. Call 1-800-814-7933. That's 1-800-814-7933. Tonight on Me TV, it's MASH, followed by Perry Mason, the TV movies, and the Ed Sullivan Show. That's on the way on Me TV. We're back. And Scott has proposed a two-for-one deal. A vintage Darth Vader figurine signed by David Prowse for Ronald's Evil Knievel set. This may be kids' toys, but it's a vicious game that we play here. Lisa will tell you, when I come on the show, I come hard with some good, some good stuff. And this is from my personal collection. Now, let me, let, me, let me say something to you, say something to you, Scott. Number one, my son's going to watch this, and he's going to want to cut my throat if I don't get him that Star Wars piece to go with the rest of this stuff here. You just stole evil Knievel. So, Ronald, do I hear you? Are you really going to make this trade? If Scott wants it, it's up to Scott. I think Ronald did a Jedi mind trick on me because I'm all ready for it, and he threw it back at me as if he didn't want to do it, but I came to him at first with it. I have to think about it. I mean, I, it's an iconic toy that, that really interests me. I was under the impression, and we've been doing this show for a while now, that you make the offer, that's, then you gotta follow through if he says okay. And I think Scott's more surprised than I am. I, I, I don't know that he was really prepared to let go of that Darth Vader. Are you gonna make this trade that you offered? Let's do it. Let's do it. How do you feel about that, Ron? Um, Brother Scott can get anything you want from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it sounds like you both made a good deal. And Scott, I promise you one thing. I'll never sell it. When I get a little older, you come on and you hit me and you tell me you want that back. I'll make sure you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds All good. All right, brother. I'm a man of my word. I just love that. So it, he's just loaning it to him. If Scott wants this, he's, it's, it's in great hands for him to take it from my kids to him. And it'll be a pleasure to remember Scott in my museum that I got that from him. Out of everything in your house, do you have something that is of the most value to you? Yes, I do. 
Because I have a diorama of the war 1879, Rourke's Drift, when the Zulus battled the British. It's a part of history. It has right now, it has about 40,000 figures on it, and each figure has to be hand painted. Over the past like 30 years, I've painted to the point I need glasses to paint. But that's my most cherished folk art thing that I've done. Wow, what a labor of love. It kept me out of trouble. <laughs> Even better. <laughs>